grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, you know, it's good to be spring when the outside door is allowed to be open. We get some fresh air going on in here, so that's a good sign. For those who are here Wednesday, you remember we talked about lack of sleep. We talked about being tired. And this is part two to the message, but I want to catch everybody else up for, for some that were not here. We were in First Kings, and I asked the question, have you ever been tired in your entire life? Obviously, with a new baby in the house, tired seems to be the key word these days. She doesn't sleep a lot through the night anymore, and we wish she would. But then we remember reading from First King that Elijah had been threatened by Jezebel, King Jezebel's wife. And, and in fact, she threatened to kill him, to chop off his head. You know, the ironic part was that Elijah knew the power of God. And in fact, he had watched all these miracles being taken place. In fact, he watched God's amazing power be so much that God overthrew the false gods of Israel. Elijah saw that. He saw it and witnessed it with his own eyes. But as he was threatened, what did he do? He ran away. He ran under a tree and relied upon himself. He didn't rely upon God. He, he didn't rely upon the gift of God's word in his life. He relied upon himself. And he thought about his own weaknesses. He didn't know how to overcome all this. He didn't know how to, how to take care of this threat. Good morning. <laughs> so a lot of us are kind of like Elijah, aren't we? We get tired. We get, we get run down. And then we, we try to comfort ourselves. We don't know what to do. We don't know where to go. So what do we do? We run away. You know, we're faced with tough times. We rely on a lot of other things. We rely on magazines. We rely on TV shows. And I always have to chuckle at all these things that are on TV these days. The, the quick fixes in a half hour. You know, it takes a lifetime for these things to happen. But according to a TV show, it can be fixed just like that. You have to wonder. But that's Hollywood, isn't it? Well, what was the phrase that we ended with last week? Does anybody remember? When we're tired, when we're beat down, when we don't know what else to do, what's our phrase? The battle belongs to the Lord. The Lord. Say that with me. The battle belongs to the Lord. That's where it belongs. And that brings me in to today's message. You know, a lot of us can't go without opening up the paper or front page news. And George handed me this this morning. You know, we have a lot of wars that have gone on in our lifetime. There's a lot of wars that happened even before we were born. And in fact, they're countless. There's so many conflicts that we've been part of. And in fact, we're overseas so much right now, it's amazing. You know, it's funny. It's not even funny. Some of you even here were part of those very conflicts and those very wars. And in fact, for those who are engaged in military battle, there's three things that I thought were kind of interesting. One is there's no doubt they knew who their enemy was. There's no question who they were going up against. Two, they had a plan. They had a plan to defeat the evil. There's a reason we were involved in that conflict. Whether we agree or disagree, there was a plan. There were generals sitting at, at the Pentagon going through the strategies, going through all the things they need to do to overcome and win this battle. And then the third thing is you had to have trained people to go carry out that plan. Why do I bring up wars? Why do I talk about battles? What do battles have to do with us? Well, when you're down, you're tired, you're weak, we're waging war against a spiritual battle as Christians. You know, oftentimes we think that, ah, 
Satan can come against me and I know what to do. I can take care of him. I'll just kick him right out the door. He can't come up against me. Well, I think sometimes we underestimate the spiritual battles in our life. Does anybody in here have a perfect life? Anybody? I'd love to have one, but I know it's not going to happen. Anybody here not make a mistake? Ever? You try? <laughs> I won't point out the back row. Oh, my. That, that war will be later. We'll, we'll talk. But, you know, a lot of us wage war every day. In fact, when we became a Christian, when we took Jesus Christ into our hearts, we began to wage war against Satan. But what did we have to do? We needed to train ourselves, didn't we? We needed to, to be prepared to go into that battle. We couldn't walk alone. We didn't know what to do. What was our plan? How were we going to get there? How are we going to fight this spiritual warfare? How would we fight Satan? You know, the, the funny part is that I, I was reading this as I was researching it this week. And a lot of Christians think that we're fighting things that have flesh. We as Christians think that it has to be flesh and blood sitting in front of us in order to be the evil. And that's not true. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say we're going to have some kind of seance and we're going to have these spirits floating all over us. But why do they call it spiritual warfare? <clears throat> I don't see Satan walking in a black robe coming down the carpet right up here. In fact, if he does, we're just going to kick him right out. I don't see that. It's not flesh and blood. It's just kind of in the air. It's kind of mysterious, isn't it? That is the battle that we as Christians are dealing with. I'd like you to open your Bibles. We're going to go to Psalms. Let's go here from the Psalmist David. Psalms 7 with 14 verse. Psalms chapter 7, beginning with the 14th verse. I thought these words were interesting from David. Here are these words. Verse, 14, verse 7. I'm sorry. Chapter 7, verse 14. The wicked conceive evil. They are pregnant with trouble and give birth to lies. They dig a pit to trap others and then fall into themselves. They make trouble, but it backfires on them. They plan, there's the key word, they plan violence on others, but it falls on their own head. They plan that violence. How many people thought <clears throat> Satan plans his attack against you? You should. You should. Because he is. When you come to church and you learn a new verse, you come to church and you hear something in a message that, that just wells up inside of you and brings joy in your life, don't think for a second. In fact, don't get comfortable. Because Satan's going to try to come and tear it down. That is a guarantee. He's already waging his plan, his attack on this message today. It sounds kind of strange, but I can feel that as I was putting this together. Because this is a clear plan to come against sport, spiritual warfare in your life. Satan's sitting up there right now saying, I don't want them to hear this stuff. Because that's going to push me right out. Well, good. Because that's our plan. You know, it was interesting. I want to go to Ephesians. And if I keep your finger here in Ephesians chapter 6, because we're going to come back to it quite a bit today. Many of you probably know this section. It's about the whole armor of God. But I want to talk about this first part just so we know what we're fighting against. And realize Paul was writing this from prison. In fact, most of Paul's letters were written while he was incarcerated, in chains. And you would think he would be sad. You'd think he would, he would be 
sorrowful and holding into himself and not knowing what to do and just totally lost. But some of the greatest words from this writer come right here. So we're at Ephesians 6, and we're going to start at the 12th verse. Ephesians 6, at the 12th verse. Here are these words. For we are not fighting against a people made of flesh and blood, but against the evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against those mighty powers of darkness who rule this world, and against wicked spirits in the heavenly realms. So it's not flesh and blood that we're going up against, are we? It's spirits. It's this stuff that's just floating out there. It's coming against us. So the question comes up, what do I do? How do I fight against this evil? How do I resist all this stuff that's about to come my way? How many people have uh, exercise videos or a Wii machine, we Fit, any weights at home that you've got dust sitting on? Well, go knock that dust off. And in fact, when I think about what we need to do as Christians, I kind of relate it back to a little bit of weightlifting. You know, to get your body in shape, they say that you need to do some cardiovascular work, but you also need to do a little bit of muscle work. Now, you don't have to go out and be a little sports man off. You don't have to go build bulging waffles. But we do have to exercise a little bit, don't we? We have to try to get ourselves in shape. This will be the, the Christian weight club. How about that? Yeah, it doesn't. 